Hello, third episode of Courtesy Cast. Jesse and Jacqueline here today. Bubby is gone, watching an orchestra. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Not too bad. I'm liking a little, but good. It's getting really hot. I gotta take my jacket off now. Yeah, same. I gotta okay. turn on my ceiling fan. No, don't! Um, huh? <laughs> I can't hear you over her ceiling fan. So, so today, um, we're going to talk about conventions and different conventions, what kind of things we like at conventions, our experiences. Um, so let's just start off with the big one. Actually, we'll talk about what uh, Jacqueline and I went to today. So today we went to a tiny convention in South Jersey called South Jersey Geek Fest. Um, That's cool. It's... A convention by means that it has a venue I'd say <laughs> and food trucks but it wasn't really something that you would expect if you've been to a bigger convention like PAX or Comic-Con um, oh having that have an expectation too though yeah PAX is but, like yeah. Broadway play this convention was like a school a high school play <laughs> oh like yeah. uh like that t the Pokemon tournament in Salem Oregon Sure, oh. I don't. I didn't go to that one actually. I thought you did. No, you went with Michael. Oh, and Jake. Yeah, Question Michael, mark? Jake. Yeah, that's right. Get Michael Fuck. On the podcast. Well, that reference didn't even matter, so <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, but it was, you know, a really tiny convention. There was a lot of heart, though. Like there was people um, dressed up in cosplay. They had. You know, a lot of people there, surprisingly. Uh, there was lots of cars. But once you got inside the venue, it was kind of just vendors who have comics. Uh, one guy had video games and people selling art, and it wasn't that good of art. I don't want to be rude. There was maybe, like, one art vendor that I thought, wow, that's something yeah, that I could that. buy, but I'm not going to. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying these people had bad art. It just wasn't for me. Um, I understand that, though. So if I were to rate the convention on my personal experience, it would be that um, it wasn't too out of the ordinary, nothing that I really cared for, and I didn't want to buy anything. Nothing caught my eye. Um, Is that something you like to look for when you're at conventions? Just like, oh, what should I buy while I'm here? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, there's always, like... Those really cool vendors, especially if you go to PAX, that, like, make really cool fan stuff, like books or, like, clothing or whatever. And it's like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I can never get this anywhere else. You could probably mm -hmm. buy it on the Internet, but I couldn't buy it in person anywhere else. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, it wasn't like that at that place. There was um, one person who had custom Amiibos. I mean, they were no Miss Gonda Crisp, but they were pretty cool. Wait, really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah they did have um, different, like, smash swapped color palettes of the Smash Amiibos. So oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Shiny Charizard and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Pink Samus was one of them. Oh, really? That's awesome. Is that the um, one with the blue shoulders or a different one? I don't, I don't remember if it's blue. I just remember pink. Maybe pink and yellow. Okay. But, um... Another, like, cool convention that we went to, and this is, like, a step up from this Geek Fest one, mm -hmm. would be, like, the uh, Too Many Games convention in Philadelphia. I really wanted yeah, to go to that one, too. Yeah, I think. Right? Yeah. It was kind of cool. There was lots of, like, video game stuff. Charles Martinet, which is the oh. voice of Mario, for those who don't know. Um, he was there. They had the band that exclusively only makes Sonic the Hedgehog music, but like oh they like try to sell themselves off as being a band, but they <laughs> the only albums they have are Sonic the Hedgehog music. Oh. Um, <laughs> they were there. People were like, "Oh yeah, dude. Oh, I can't wait to see them." And I'm like, "Dude, don't they just only do <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog?" They had some cool panels there and um lots of video games for sale. That's like a tier two convention, all right? 
Yeah, um, talking about all the conventions I went to. What's gonna happen when it's my turn to talk? Well, I just wanted <laughs> to talk true. about like how conventions go, like how they go from like, oh, this is a tiny building with people who like stuff to, oh, hey, there's actually like Mario's voice actors here, and there's actually like things to do other than buy stuff or walk around. Um, they had some indie developers there that you could play games of wasn't like anything like too out of the ordinary or crazy and there was youtubers and stuff so it is kind of like a bigger convention but it wasn't quite pax right like pax and comic-con are like the top dogs you know what i mean Mm -hmm. especially in my opinion comic-con i haven't gone but that seems like a monster of a convention oh yeah definitely um so, like, a Tier 3 convention was uh, we went to Anime Next in Atlantic City. And they had prominent anime voice actors. They had an entire, like, hall for, like, artists to sell stuff in. And the art was amazing. Mm-hmm. I bought a poster. I'm pretty sure I bought some other stuff. Jacqueline got a wallet there. There was, like, lots of cool things at that convention. There was lots of panels going on. There was like a like an anime Jeopardy. Um, oh, that's cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. There was lots of cool stuff going on at that convention. Yeah. Um, oh. oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm like, I couldn't even hear half the stuff you said about Anime Next because I was lagging out. <laughs> that's okay. But anime Next is definitely pretty cool because like, I don't know... I mean, I've been to a couple anime conventions. I've been to g- video game conventions. I haven't gone to much other than those two themes. But Anime Next is kind of... I've followed it for quite a few years now. Like, that was something I started going to in high school. And it started in a whole different location. And now it's moved to Atlantic City, a bigger city. A, like, way bigger venue. And it's right on top of the... um train station and everything so it kind of has everything going for it and i was so excited when it moved venues because even though i miss the old place like i knew it would be growing bigger and the Mm. way it's talked about it's like very highly regarded and stuff and everybody's excited for it and all and i love okay the best thing about anime next is the artist alley in the dealer's room the shopping there they import a bunch of stuff from japan there's all i mean different types of manga and merchandise about anime that you could find there and then there's also the artist alley which is i mean they have a lot of really talented artists come there i mean there's been some artists that i like knew way before i knew about anime next that have gone there and that's really exciting that is really cool the downside for me is that the guest list is pretty cool most of the time the panels i feel like They have some nice classic panels that they have every year, but they don't have like a huge amount of panels. And since they've just moved venue two or three years ago, um, there's a lot of unused space. So Anime Next for me, even though it's like one of the biggest conventions where I live, is kind of like I could do it all in a day. (laughs) Because, Mm. I mean, I don't do the after dark stuff, you know? I don't go to like the midnight rave or like... 18 plus stuff so i guess i'm missing out because i'm more of a picky person with what i go to do but no. i still wish there's a little bit more offered by such a big convention such a big venue yeah anime next is definitely even as far as too many games goes um anime next does have the same selection maybe a little bit less of video games, but also that anime motif. And so it's kind of like, I would say it was, it's a higher, higher up than too many games was, but not by like a huge margin or anything. It's really cool though. I loved anime next. Uh, it was my first time going last year. I loved it a lot. That's awesome. Why don't you tell us about, PAX West, Jesse. Um, my first experience, or do you want to hear like my overall experience going to PAX West? Both, if you want to. 
I guess my first experience, it was with you and mm. okay. Yeah, no. So <clears throat> my first experience at PAX West was honestly really fun, but there were a lot of intricacies that happened that made it fun, but okay, I'll just go over it. So it was you, <laughs> Jesse, Taryn, Darshan, me, I think Jake as well. No, I don't think Jake went that one. And we all ended up like just going together, which was cool to me. Like, oh, this is awesome. It was my first convention as well. So I don't, I didn't really know what I should do, where I should go, what I'm looking for. I just know that at that time I was like, I just like Nintendo. So I'm going to kind of find wherever that's at and see what's going on over there. And um, mm -hmm. that's kind of when I learned about the buddy system, I guess. Because no one is really that good at communicating in a place that for some reason has no reception, no matter what time of the day it oh is. Oh my god, I know. It, it's like every convention that I've gone to has that issue, and I don't understand. I'm like, what is going on? Why Why is there no reception? Why is there no Wi-Fi, dude? Just give us something. But uh, Yeah, it's pretty bad in the Washington State Convention Center. Yeah. And that was, that, that was the year, when we first went there, that was the year when Smash... Uh, four was coming to the 3ds and Wii U, and we got to oh, play man. that, and we got those cool little towels, and I was like, "This is fucking cool! I love this! I still have it too." And uh, yeah, I entered the uh, little competition they had, and I won. And you got the red one. Special towel. Yeah, they ran yeah. out. They didn't offer anymore. I was mad. I'm like, I wanted the special <laughs> one. I played Pit at that uh, competition thing. Nice. I picked Kirby because I'm just a basic bitch, you know. But uh, <laughs> I uh, never pick Kirby. He's always the worst, I love except Kirby. for Smash One. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Um, and then I went to the Pokemon booth, thinking I was gonna get something cool. And when I say something cool, I don't mean like an object. I just mean it's a booth. What do you got going on? What's happening here? Let's let's get an experience going, you know. And it was literally mm. that you could sit there and play the trading card game on their fucking computers. The same shit you could do at home. And they wanted me to oh do it here at this God. convention. I said, no, this is a waste of time. There's no oh, way. Oh, I remember that. That was when they first launched Pokemon Trading Card Game Online. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Wow. That's 2014? 2013. Oh. You were close. Damn. Yeah. And, uh... I remember playing L Lichdom Battle Mage, which I now own for a PS4. Uh, <laughs> it was a fun game. Me and uh, Jesse played that, and I did that. Well, it was on computer when we first played it, and the concept's really fun, and I just I really enjoyed the game. But then um, the rest of it, I don't really remember. I entered a Mario Kart tournament and met Abdallah Smash for the first time, and that was cool because I watched him periodically on YouTube. And... Yeah, I mean, PAX is, like, that's the difference between Anime Next and PAX. It's, like, not only is there some, like, influential creators there, mm -hmm. and there are some interesting things, like, all the biggest companies are there. Nintendo, Xbox, yeah, uh, Microsoft, Sony, Square Enix is there, and the games that are there Ubisoft. don't even exist yet. Mm -hmm. Like, you can play games that aren't released. Um, oh, I'm yeah. assuming things like that are similar at Comic-Con. Maybe you can get a comic that isn't published yet or hasn't been released to at least the general public or something like that. Or a panel. These, or a panel, like meeting somebody famous. I mean, I didn't even have to go to a panel to meet Dunky. I just was passing by him, and I saw Dunky and Leah, and I was like, oh, hey, Dunky. Leah and they were like, "Oh, hello." And I was like, "Hi. Oh, it's so cool to see you guys in person." And they were like, "Yeah." And then we just kind of small talked. And then I was like, "Well, I'm glad you guys are having fun. All right, I'll see you around." I didn't even get a picture with them. But I mean, that was my mistake. I was just so enamored by the fact that I saw them just walking by me. Dude. I saw like League of Legends pro players walking around. I saw Peanut Butter Gamer and Space Hamster, and all these people that I watched on YouTube way before mm -hmm. I even went to PAX, and I just saw them walking around in person. Yeah! Like, 
they weren't doing anything. They weren't, like, doing a panel. Like, I'm sure they had a panel, but they weren't doing that. They were just walking around, you know? Mm -hmm. That's, like, how um, I ended up meeting um, Aaron Hansen and then... Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the other person. Oh, uh, Jay Penguin. Before I was, like, actually into watching his stuff, I went... I was looking for him because Jake brought gave me a hat that he wanted a tournament and said... Have him sign this for me, please. I said, okay, I'll do it for you. And I found him, and I was like, hey, can you sign this? He's like, oh, cool. What series do you watch? I said, honestly, my brother watches you, and he's a really big fan of you. So I wanted to do this for him. He's like, oh, that's really cool for you, dude. Then we had a battle, and I had to cut it short because we were all going to go to watch the Rooster Teeth premiere of, um, I think it was season two of Ruby or something like that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, I saw Monty Ohm there in person before he passed. Bless his soul. Bless him. Ugh, that was a hard day for me. Yeah. But yeah. I miss him still. <laughs> yeah, anyways. Um yeah. That was great, man. Pa our first PAX was so cool. LCS was at PAX. Uh League Legends Championship Series. Yeah. There was um I got a kale skin. <laughs> same. Riot Kale. They were giving out Riot Kale and Arcade Misfortune, I think. Uh I think it was yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right on that. Yeah, they were just giving them out. Um, they had all this cool stuff going on. Like, you can just go somewhere at PAX, find like an indie game, and they'll be like, "Oh, whoever gets the highest score gets this game for free on Steam when it comes out in like four months." And you're like, "I'm gonna get the high score. I gotta do it." <laughs> yep. <laughs> or. Um, me and Jacqueline, we went to PAX East. We met the developers of Brawlhalla. And they were like, hey, get in line. You know, if you play me, you get a pin. If you take one of my stocks, you'll get a t-shirt. If you beat me, you get this $60 headset. And we were like, all right, Whoa. we got to try it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I took a stock, so I got the t-shirt. I'm actually wearing it right now. But, <laughs> That's um, cool. Yeah, you can just go to PAX, meet the developers, um, play their games, get free stuff. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Like, I watched Indie Game the Movie. And in Indie Game the Movie, they have Team Meat in there, which has um, Edmund McMillan and Tommy. I don't remember his last name. But I met Tommy at PAX West the first year we went. It was called PAX Prime at the time. Oh, yeah. And... Um, I met him. I was like, oh, man, this guy made a game that I really like. He's also on a movie that I really inspired me. And here he is in person right now. That's how I like, recognized him. I would love to meet him. And guess what? I had the chance. I had the opportunity. Um, they also have lots of cool, like, game hey. stuff there. Game paraphernalia, things like controllers for old consoles, video games for old consoles, things like that. Mm -hmm. Fan stuff, like books about all the like plants in stardew valley or something like that it's so cool didn't we um meet tommy again yeah he was at pax met? east yeah like i was playing that game that another indie developer made it was like a platformer and tommy was hanging around that other developer developer and they were watching me play it and i kept like dying but I was no that was the guy who made nuclear throne was there. oh yeah nuclear throne guy yeah we met the guy who made Nuclear Throne, and we watched his panel about um, indie games charging too low of prices for their games. Oh, wow. Yeah, he, he is a really outspoken guy, but I, th I like his brutal honesty. That's something I appreciate in pretty much anybody, so. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love going to PAX. You always have this, like, lanyard that you get that's like, oh, it's Mafia really nice. 3 or Final Fantasy 14 online. Put your badges on this lanyard. You go in, you meet all the developers for the indie games, and you find, you go to the Nintendo booth, and they're doing, like, a crazy, like, crowd event where they're throwing, like, bananas out, like, Donkey Kong bananas out into the crowd, or t-shirts, or hats, or giving hats away to, like, dads that are really nice to their kids oh <laughs> you know like it's just such a great experience if you ever have the chance go to pax if you like video games it's just so fun and it's so it's such a great experience 
Well, I'd say even if you don't like video games, trying and packs out because there's a lot of stuff like the panels, especially if you're not even someone who is really into video games, but you like content creation or you want to make a board game. If you like board games, I got tons of board games and even like oh yeah, that's true. Personally developed ones that you can try. It's it's fucking it's awesome. And I, they have like, um, Magic the Gathering is always there. Like, yeah, the, like Wizards of the Coast is there. And they always give out, like, packs of magic cards if you're interested in Magic the Gathering. They also have, like, exploding cats, kittens? Kittens, cats? yeah. Kittens. Um, they have cards against humanity. Dude. Uh, where you can get your own custom yeah, cards printed so by fun. the Cards Against Humanity people. Mm -hmm. You say whatever you want. You're like, I want this to be a card. And they just make it and they give it to you. Like, actually printed cards against humanity card for you to have yeah. like that's really cool um they also come up with like a new box up for their cards that's like even better than the last and has all the expansions and then some that you wouldn't get in other ones it's like that's cool but you can only get them at the conventions i i have not seen them online unless like ebay but yeah that's really cool um i wanted to talk a little bit about the bad experiences Oh. Um, Wait, were there any other conventions that 2.0 went to? Yeah, I went yeah. to uh, TwitchCon. Oh, tell us about that. That one was very interesting. Like, I used... I planned out every single slot because I wanted to go to as many panels as I could and just kind of introduce myself slash uh, really absorb the information. I took so many notes. I brought my iPad. I was writing notes and stuff. Like, it was a much different type of enjoyment I got out of this experience because a lot of times it's like, oh, go play these games and whatnot. TwitchCon didn't really have that many games, per se. It was like, you could sit and watch shows. Like, they had a band where, like, uh, or not a band, like a stage where, like, different bands would go up and sing, and they're all streaming it live. And, like, that was really cool. And you get to be a part of the audience as well as be in chat, and you can see yourself on there. Like, that was pretty cool. Uh, they had the streamer meet and greet, and uh, a couple of my favorite streamers were there, but I didn't want to go and wait in line for it. I was just like, I, if I meet them outside of it, it's a bit more genuine. Like, this guy, Burgability, he plays a lot of Nintendo games, and I was watching him with my niece and nephew when I was really sick a while back, in like 2015. We just sit there and watch his videos, and it was really nice. And I met him there, and he's like, I was like, Berg? He's like, oh, hey, dude. I'm like, dude. That's so cool to see you. He's like, yeah, dude, here, check this out. Boom. And he hands me this little packet full of his sticker emotes and pins. I'm like, dude. He's like, yeah, just take it. I was like, thank you. My niece and nephew will really enjoy this. He's like, oh, niece and nephew gives me two more. I'm like, wow, dude. That is so cool. Yeah. I was like, dude, that's so cool. Thanks so much. And then I walked away and I was like, what the fuck just happened, dude? That was so, he was so chill. And that's kind of the vibe I got from it for the most part, like during the day. During nighttime, they had this, uh, I think it was on Sunday, they had this big boat, haunted boat, because it was during Halloween, um, club sort of dance thing, I guess, where uh, mm -hmm. I guess only, like, it was mostly just a partner party, honestly. Like, the, the boat could only fit 13,000 people, 12,000 approximately uh, partners were there. So technically, it was a partner party, but... Um, a lot of people said it was fun. A lot of people also said it was lame. I honestly spent my time hanging out with like just friends I made while I was there because I went alone and I just started talking to people. I met some really cool people, uh, hung out with them for the majority of the uh, convention, and then at the end, just like added each other on Snapchat and said, "Deuces, if I see another convention, I'll make sure to say hi." And it was just a lot of fun. I had a I I really. Um, just absorbed all like those panels. I think what was really nice about them was there were questions that I've always had, but looking it up on like Google, it was always just a generalized Twitch FAQ, but then you're getting the answers right. directly from people. Like I watched one for voice actors, voice actors on Twitch and they had, um, Elspeth, they had uh, zombie unicorn, a couple other, um, I think it's called that Epic voice guy. I think that's the name. Um, but they talked about how you do, you go about like 
branding yourself not only as a streamer but as a voice actor and i think elspeth did what's that uh tiny little poppy she did poppy's voice for league of legends <laughs> oh that's cool yeah so it's just it was really informational and i just even like the party side the party side of it like that was fun i didn't really care for drinking but the socializing i i love just talking to people so it was it was super uh it was awesome that's all i gotta say that's cool that's another thing that conventions are used for like to me pax and i'm assuming comic-con is the same way i haven't been are like same. you go there and you look at content and you consume content and it's just like a fun like adventure throughout the whole day but then there's conventions like that and i'm sure these are what conventions were made for but to network with people yeah in the same field as you um say for twitchcon twitch streamers network with them um learn from each other uh collaborate with each other things like that like bringing people together to help better themselves with everyone around them yeah and that's really cool something that like i really took from this was like any opportunity to meet someone is an opportunity to like gain a connection or a friend because the most I talked to people was when I was in cab rides to and from like the different locations and stuff. And I remember this guy, I saw he had his, um, his old shirt. So I started asking what he does for Corsair and he's like, Oh, I'm, I work in the hardware and I can't remember exactly what it was. I, I feel bad for not remembering his name, but basically we just talked, kind of got to know what his job was, explain what I do. And, um, he, I was like, Hey, do you have a card? Uh, I'll go stop by your booth later. So he gave me his card. I stopped by his booth and I started talking to him about like how I built my computer and what I, I think I do have a couple Corsair products in there actually. And uh, the guy was like, dude, here, make sure you email me. I'll give you 50% off your next purchase. I was like, dude, hell yeah. Thanks dude. And so he emails That's me cool. this coupon like later that night after I messaged him back. Like it was, it was awesome. I was like, that is so cool. Yeah. yeah. So that's, another thing at conventions like stuff like that that is just so cool um i want to talk a little bit about the bad experiences at conventions though or maybe not at or in the convention centers themselves but on the way waiting to get in leaving um so one really bad experience is uh, when I still lived in Washington, because I live in New Jersey now, Jacqueline came to visit me because she lived in New Jersey. And we went to PAX West together. And we went with my dad, and we stayed at a hotel in Bellevue. Mm -hmm. And we went there, and we went early. We were like, oh, we're so excited to go to PAX. And uh, we got our, like, booklets that for the program and everything with the maps of the whole expo hall where each booth is going to be. Yeah. We're so excited to do this. And I mean, I love PAX West. I love PAX West. It is the biggest, best convention for me because I love video games. But why do they queue line you outside the convention center? Like, I don't know. They always, and like when we went to PAX East, they queued us up inside. It's uh, Washington was State too. Set aside for us. Yeah, I know. It's Washington State. It's going to rain. So me and Jacqueline are out there. Uh, yeah, it's overcast. It's been overcast every single day. No, it didn't rain every single day. In fact, I think this is the only day it did rain uh, oh, on our no. vacation. And we were standing out there, and it was just pouring, right? And sometimes the enforcers come, and they make they pack you like sardines. That's one thing about – another thing about packs. You are surrounded by people who either – are like really hot and sweaty because I don't know, it's hot outside, uh, especially PAX West is in the summer um, at the end of August, early September, whatever it's uh, Labor Day weekend. Mm. So it's yeah. kind of hot out. People are sweaty. It's on this particular day. It was pouring rain. Uh, people smell. Some people just smell. They just smell so and gross. they don't make, they don't make an effort to smell better. Um, 
but we were out there. It was pouring rain, and Jacqueline was holding the book above her head, like actually left it on top of her head to keep herself from getting soaked. She was already soaked, anyways. We weren't wearing anything crazy. We, I maybe I had a hoodie on. Jacqueline had a button-up shirt, and we were both wearing jeans, and we were just soaked to the bone. Wow. By the time we got inside the convention oh my center, gosh. I've never been we so cold. We got out there. We got out there at seven or eight. The hall doesn't open till ten. And we were just, we wanted to get there early so we could get to the place where we wanted to be as fast as possible. Because that's what you have to do at PAX. You got to get there way hours early because if you get to Nintendo, say Nintendo, if you want to get to Nintendo and actually play a game or something, you have to get to the convention center at like 7 o'clock. Yeah. And wait in line you gotta for be there three early. hours. Ugh to get in as fast as possible because by the time you get to that line for nintendo or what have you it'll be capped out for that entire day Mm -hmm. whoever's at the end of the line will be standing there for eight hours to play a couple games for maybe 20 to 15 minutes and like you got to figure out what those games are at the time, I think it was Resident Evil 7. We didn't oh, even get yeah. in, by the way. It was capped out for the day by the time we got there. We ran there. Uh, and we were there at open. 7. Wow. Um, That's... Mm. It was maybe even like... Yeah, I don't know. It was before 7.05, definitely. Yeah. So, it was not cool. And, um... I mean, we we really tried, and it wasn't worth it. And we were soaked to the bone, and Jacqueline got really sick. So... <laughs> yeah that's something um, I mean it's kind of obvious or if you've never been to a convention I guess I'll explain one of the worst things about conventions is that you're very likely to get sick with that many people especially if it's a gaming convention you're all touching the same things ugh. and there's just so it's just such tight quarters I don't know how many conventions the people listening have been to but even the one we went to today Geek Fest. The smallest convention ever was packed full because of the size of the venue. If you're going to a convention and you're, like, susceptible to getting sick, especially more than the normal person like I am, definitely, like, hand sanitizer. They offer it at every single table at PAX. Um, I wear a mask to them. Even if I look silly, I'd rather not get sick because it'll just ruin the rest of the days that you're going or the rest of your week, if not. It's so true. The other thing that is really, like... I mean, I can't say I get used to it, but I expect it when we go to conventions, but it's still, like, a thing that happens every time. Jacob mentioned it. People stink, man. You'd think Mm. they'd shower. This is their nice, like, big day out. Shower. Why do you smell like you've just crawled out of a barn you've been living in your whole life? It's terrible. I'll never forget the look on Jacob's... Or a crypt. Yeah, the look on your face. (laughs) The one time we passed one guy who was particularly so smelly that... I mean, you were like taken out of this world for a second. Yeah, I thought I thought a mummy wow. just walked by me. How putrid the man smelled. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's rude, but dude, if you smelled that guy, you like I thought that like I seriously smelled a dead body. Wow, that's disgusting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't stand it when I pull my feet out of my shoes and they stink. I can't, uh, no. Nope. Right. Um, uh, another terrible experience that me and Jesse have had going to a convention, uh, PAX particularly. Um, we lived west of Seattle on an island. Yeah. We used a ferry at the south end of the island to get to the mainland Washington to drive an hour south. From there. Maybe like 40 minutes south to Seattle. And um, it was, oh, man. We would be, we would go to PAX at 5 o'clock in the morning. We would leave our friend's house at 5 o'clock in the morning, get uh, to the ferry, hopefully catch it on time. Hopefully. Go across the water. Drive all the way to the convention center. Hopefully, get a good spot. Be at in in the at the line 
waiting to get into PAX at 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Go in at 10. Spend the entire day there. Finally get back. We would leave at maybe like 9 or 10 o'clock. We would get back at midnight. We would all talk about our day and instantly conk out and wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to do it again. Because PAX PAX West goes for four days. And we went every single day. And you know what? I loved it. Like I felt like when I was going through the motions, like going to PAX, waking up early, going to PAX, going home, going to sleep, waking up, going to PAX, I felt like I had changed my life from what it currently was to a different lifestyle of convention life. Yeah. Of going to PAX and having fun and spending time with my friends 24 hours a day. And that was like the time of my life. I'd never had so much fun in my entire life. So yeah, PAX is great. But the two-hour commute we made every day in the morning at 5 o'clock in the morning and at 10 o'clock at night going back home (sighs) was terrible. Don't do that. Don't do it that way. Uh, I mean, if you're poor like we were, do it. But I mean, you know what I mean. If you can get a hotel, I mean, PAX offers great deals on hotels. Um, When the, the moment they sell the tickets, they also sell their deals on the hotels that are either connected to the convention center or mm-hmm. are within a couple blocks radius of the convention center. So definitely get those if you can. I would, but, I would even say yeah. just make friends with people in Seattle. So next year you have somebody to go to their house next. So you don't got to travel so fucking far because that drive <laughs> was fucking awful, dude. I'd, I'd yeah, literally be sleeping bad. on the ferry ride across. Cause I'm like, okay, I need some sleep. <sighs> okay. We gotta get, keep trying. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> and you drove like three days mm-hmm. no you would drive there in the morning and then me or 1.0 would drive us back in the that's evening, right. right that's right yeah i hate the lines like i will literally i will stand there count how many people ask hey what is the wait how, how long do you get to play the video game for oh uh, like 15 minutes or uh 10 minutes i'm like okay that's uh that's till the end of the night. Guess I'm not playing. I want to move on. And I go to a different lane. I'm just like, okay. Uh, oh, I can stay here for like 45 minutes. I can make that. That's fine. But they're like... I was excited for this Telltale Games Minecraft story because I was like, that's. I want to know how they would do that. I, it just sounds like it'd be a good idea. It wasn't. It was ass. The fucking... The, the play that you got to was like... It's not like they're... Um, what's that? What's that show? Walking Dead series. It's not like that series where it's like really polished and the decisions you make really, you get really emotionally attached. It's like some Steve looking guy with the girl looking version of that girl. I don't know what her name is. Stacy or something like that. It just, it was. Alex? Alex. I, I think you're right. That might be it. Um, no, they're just, the characters, I couldn't bond with them because it was all just very blanket character development like oh everybody's kind of a nice guy and they kind of have nice intentions it's not like in walking dead where you got people who you know are like only working for themselves or then people who actually are caring about other people and want to make decisions that help everybody it just i was really disappointed and i waited three hours for that i said really and i got a shirt that doesn't fit me we don't have any sizes or any of your sizes i guess i'll just take it but still man that's rude yeah, and like I wanted to do it every day because I had a different shirt every day because I thought it was cool, but that was before I, you know, found out it was a bad game. So, <laughs> yeah, um, the booth was really cool though. It was like a booth constructed out of Minecraft blocks, wasn't it? Yeah, it it was really nice. I did like that. Um, yeah, that was cool. One thing I didn't like from pa- uh, TwitchCon was that like. I guess not like, but a bad experience I had. The people you bring with you make or break your experience to conventions. And I'm not saying this specifically for TwitchCon. I'm just saying in general, when I compare my experience of going alone to TwitchCon and then going with friends, there are some times when your friend wakes up and they're just in a bad mood. And it sets a tone for the whole day. And unless you're like really close with that person then that's fine. You can always work through those kinds of, like, happenstances. Like, I remember when we took, uh, who was it? Jake. Jake ended up getting upset about something one morning, and we worked it out, but it's, like, it's easier to work it out with somebody like that than it would be if you, you know, wanted to meet, I don't know, your internet friend over um, in, I don't know, 
here, for example, like, oh, hey, dude, let's hang out. And we meet up over in PAX, and then they're actually kind of a, a dick. And it's like, wow, okay, well. Right. I, mm-hmm. I think if you are, like, a if somebody who really enjoys just a go, go, go lifestyle, kind of like what you were saying at our experience at PAX uh, Prime, mm-hmm. it just – it really makes a difference when you bring people who you like are, are closer to. Because I I enjoyed every PAX. TwitchCon was fun, but I just um you just got to be careful. Is all. Yeah, I hear you. Do you have anything else to add, Jacqueline, about no. conventions? No. All right. Let's move on to talking about Game Club because we actually finally played our game. Yes. We actually played our game. Pokemon Coliseum is our game. Um, I'm not sure if I said that before. I think you did mention the last but, episode. But that's uh, that's the game we're playing, all right? And we've all played to a certain degree, I think. And um, I'm enjoying it so far. I mean, I've played the game before. I've never beaten the game, though. Um, but... I mean, it's pretty cool. You don't... It's not like a regular Pokemon game. You don't, like, walk around the wild. You're not 10 years old and go, Yay, I'm going on my journey. You get a starter and you leave and you go find wild Pokemon and catch them and make your own party of Pokemon and become friends with them. You're actually, like, an ex-criminal in this game. Mm -hmm. And you attacked your own, like, criminal team and stole a, like, device from them that lets you steal pokemon from other people but since you're not a criminal anymore you're an ex-criminal you're stealing pokemon that they've like locked their hearts away with that like they're evil pokemon that attack people and you're like stealing these pokemon away from them so that way you can open their hearts back up and become friends with them again it's really weird it's really fun yeah i i love pokemon coliseum this last two hours in the game has been very nostalgic i it was fifth grade when i first started playing pokemon coliseum and i found out that you could trade pokemon from it to your game boy advanced and so i was like dude this game has a lot of good pokemon that i can't get on my games so i i tried so hard i beat the game and then i was like huh this feels kind of anticlimactic after i traded all the pokemon over and like filled out my pokedex for leaf green because I found out that there's like a way you can get Ho-Oh in the end if you catch all of them. I'm like, I have to 100% it now. And then I never did it. But now I have the opportunity. And I'm like, <laughs> it's coming. I'm so ready. <laughs> what about you, Jacqueline? How's Pokemon Coliseum going for you? <laughs> well, it's growing on me, I guess. I'm not like huge into playing the Pokemon games just because like... Even though they're fun and, like, well-constructed games, um, I just can't stick to that genre of game too long before I kind of, like, start playing stupid Overwatch or, like, dumb, like, Flash games on my browser. You know, I have a short attention span is what I'm getting at. (coughs) So, (laughs) I've been, like, getting into it, and I like that I start with Umbreon and (laughs) Eveon. (laughs) Eveon. Espeon. Because, I don't know, that's cool. I don't really like that I can't change the way my character looks. Also, I already have like a girlfriend and the game just started. This girl follows me around and she basically looks like Misty, but she's ugly. So I named her Musty. So me and Musty <laughs> go everywhere together and we just catch evil Pokemon. The problem is I got to a certain point where there's this evil owl that I'm trying to catch and <laughs> I throw a Pokemon at him. So far, full health Pokeball, I catch the evil ones every time, you know, because I got this Gajix. This time, he's not having it, and he keeps flying out of the Pokeball instantly. I'm like, okay, okay, I understand. Let me at least, like, knock his health down a bit. I end up knocking his health down to, like, 1 HP and just repetitively throw all of my balls I just, like, paid my hard- hard-earned, hard like, dollars on. You only start with, like, $10,000. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot in this world. I already spent a bunch on Pokeballs. And he won't stay in, and I'm getting so mad. And all of my Pokemon are going crazy because they haven't opened up their hearts yet. And I'm like, no, no, calm down, calm down. And meanwhile, he just has, like, 
dumb and dumber over there. The two dinkiest, ugliest Pokemon keep attacking me and beating me up and making me look like a fool. Like, I'm getting beat up by a freaking ladybug over here. And I give up. No, I don't give up. But I'm saying this is, like, the point where it's not like, ah, oh, man, I need a break from the game. It's like, I just wanted to make it to this part of the game, and if I don't catch this owl, then I might have a mental breakdown. <laughs> so, my cursor's hovering over the X button. I know I haven't <laughs> saved. And Jacob's here in the room with me, and he's like, oh, come on, Jacqueline, you got this. Let me just see what happens. And I throw a great ball at it, because I'm not in a cheapskate. And I know this hasn't worked so far. I have to use the great ball. I have no other choice. So I throw the great ball at him, <laughs> and he stays in. So what can I say? We're golden. Pokemon Call seems the best game I ever played, and I can't wait to play more. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh. oh man i loved that story yeah that was that was crazy she really used all her balls on a knockdown that okay that reminds me when i was growing up i i always asked my dad when i couldn't do a difficult part i'm like dad i can't do this can you show me how to do it or can you at least try and you go okay and it was one of the cypher battles cypher admin battles where they had like raikou suikin or anti or something like that and I think mm -hmm. it was Raikou. And we've been... No, it was speaking. We were spending so much time just trying to catch this. We had all the Ultra Balls. We knocked it down. We kept the Pokemon that had Hypnosis. We put it to sleep. We did everything that we could, and it still wouldn't work. And like that... I saw my dad grip the controller really tightly. He goes, son, sets the controller down. I'm not playing anymore. And then he gets up and he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm just like... Oh, he's mad. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to play anymore either. And I don't remember if I caught it or if my brother did. I just remember. This game is really good at just pissing you off. At dangling that little Pokemon right in front of you. Because you can't catch wild Pokemon this game. It has to be the evil Pokemon. Yeah. You, and you don't get to choose which evil Pokemon they are either. You get stupid Pokemon like Mischievous, who is strong in this game. But you don't get Makuhita. to evolve it. Or, I, I like Makuhita. I, uh, fur it. Fuck okay, that Pokemon. Let me tell you. Tell you. Let me tell you. I was, him, but I do. <laughs> let me Better tell you. I was playing Pokemon Coliseum. And fucking, I was trying to catch different kinds of Pokemon. You know, whatever they were throwing out. Whatever. I'm going to catch your evil Pokemon. I'm going to catch all the evil Pokemon. Because that's my job. My job is to catch the evil Pokemon and make them happy again. Right? Mm -hmm. And... Every single guy was like, oh, dude, look at this guy. He's got a fucking Makahita. Kill him. Oh. And they're all going after my Makahita, dude. They're beating the shit out of my Makahita. I was throwing a super potion at him. Fucking, there was one time where the Pokemon, whatever Pokemon was fighting me, right? It could have, like, it was like a bug. Maybe it was Spinarak or something. Or maybe it was like a fighting type Pokemon. They could have beat the shit out of my Umbreon I had standing next to my Makahita. But instead, like, no, 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 no. Fuck that Makahita. And they were all throwing all their moves at <laughs> my Makahita, dude. And I'm like, dude, like, I've had this Makahita since the beginning of the game. And his heart is almost open. But he keeps getting fucking killed by everybody. And I can't open his heart. Croconaw's heart's already, like, the heart gauge is already all depleted. Then the other Pokemon, probably Mischievous, has got its heart gauge depleted. Like, dude, come on. Let me, like, help my Makahita. Stop killing him. It was pretty bad. <laughs> Dude, that was them with Espeon. They had they had it out for Espeon. I sit there, because what I like to do is I train the Pokemon that can level up first to make them the same level, and then I start training all the other ones. That way, well, we do have that same experience, because all the Shadow Pokemon, they don't level up. They won't level up until oh, you unlock their that's heart. That's one thing I don't like. It's stupid, Dude. It makes me mad. Like, all these, like, shadow Pokemon, they're like, oh, yeah, you gotta play with your shadow Pokemon. You gotta use them in battles. Oh, yeah, by the way... You can only fight trainers. Oh, yeah. By the way, um, the Pokemon don't gain any experience at all, so they're all level 30. Like, what? Yeah. Like, there's that, and just the concept of, hey, this is a shadow Pokemon. It's evil. It can attack people and other Pokemon. you got to capture them, then use them to fight other Pokemon. That's the only way their heart's going to open up. 
And then, when you're fighting, you'll be like, oh, there's another Shadow Pokemon. I'm going to try and get it. Use this move with Espeon. Use Shadow Rush because you want to deal some damage. Now he's freaking out. He's having a fucking mental breakdown. I'm like, dude, Mischievous, calm down. You're good. Get back in there. We're fine. They're just like, oh, okay, I'm better. But you, you lose the entire turn. If they go into the fever pitch mode, you don't get to attack. And I don't like that. <laughs> That's true. I'm like... Oh. And if you did queue up an attack, they don't use it. Yeah! They just... Uh, nah. They're like, oh shit, I'm mad now. And you're like, no, dude, come on! I just needed you to Shadow Rush this 1 HP Spinarak! Yep. It's infuriating. Yeah. I've lost Mischievous, Quilava, multiple times. Due to just... They go... All right, yeah. Okay, this is a good game plan, guys. Let's go ahead, Shadow Rush, and then Confusion. We should have this in the bag. That's all you have to do. Both of you have to land your attacks. That's it. And then Fever Pitch, and then they double target Espeon, and it dies. Like, okay, that didn't work out at all. <laughs> I hate that, dude. That was my Makahita. I just wanted to open up his heart, but everybody was beating the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking about, like, catching Pokemon and having struggles with them, I remember when i was little it was me and my stepbrother chris stepbrother at the time and my brother joey we we're all sitting in the room we were all playing a third generation pokemon game i had ruby chris had ruby joey had sapphire and we all went at the same time hey guys let's check out the sky tower all at the same time let's see what it's like or whatever it is wherever rayquaza is right mm -hmm. we got we all get to the top me and Chris catch Rayquaza using, I, I think I used a time ball or something. I beat him up. I paralyzed him, and I caught him. Yeah. Chris did the same thing. I think he actually put him to sleep. Even better than paralyzed. Whatever. He caught Rayquaza, too. We were like, wow, this is this guy's really cool. And Joey just could not catch him. He got him down to, like, a sliver of HP. He put him to sleep. <laughs> he used... Ultra balls, time balls, whatever other kinds of balls you have in that game, dusk ball, whatever. And he was throwing all his balls and he would run out of balls. Like he had like 40 Pokeballs, 100 great balls. Like he would spend it like two or three hours just throwing Pokeballs and just run out. And Rayquaza would have red HP and it would he would get so angry and so like freaked out. At the, like, end of the night, like, he, we did this in the morning. Me and Chris were already, like, we've moved on. Joey's still catching Rayquaza. <laughs> it's maybe, like, 10 o'clock at night now. Like, we woke up at 9 o'clock in the morning. So it's 10 o'clock at night. It's been, like, 13 hours. He's still trying to catch Rayquaza. And we're in the room with him. We're like, ha, 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 you can't catch Rayquaza. He's like, get out of the room now. I don't want to see you guys' faces for the rest of the night. And he, like, pushes us, physically, like, grabs us and pushes us out of the room and slams the door and locks it. <laughs> and we're just stuck in the, like, it's nighttime. Like, we have to go to bed in, like, an hour. And Joey just locked us out of our room. Oh, shit. And, and fucking my dad comes in. He goes, hey, you better check your attitude. And Joey's like, I can't catch this Pokemon. He's like. I don't give a fuck about your Pokemon. I don't give a fuck about your game. I'm going to turn it off right now. Open this door. And it became this huge fiasco. Because he spent 13 hours trying to catch Rayquaza and failed. Like, he couldn't, like... Like, he, I would watch it happen, right? He would throw Pokeball after Pokeball after Pokeball after Pokeball on, like, red HP with a condition and never be able to catch him. And, like, there was some kickers, too. Like, he would be like, like, oh, yeah, I'm doing really good. And then he would be like, oh, crap, I got to revive my Pokemon because Rayquaza is just wailing on my team. And then he would use Struggle because he ran out of moves and died. Oh, no. You know? So that yeah, long Pokemon can be really rude sometimes. Well, I've had that experience. Just I'm gonna translate that exact experience into the end game of Pokemon Coliseum, where I think there's a Tyranitar or a Salamence or some I thought OP you, like, Pokemon. Never played this game before. I thought we chose a game we all never played. No, no, I've beaten this game multiple times. It's what one of my heck, favorite man? games. <laughs> why are we playing? Why are we playing? Co it's not too late. I mean, I got the knocked out, but it's not too late. We can play hey, a different game. <laughs> you gotta catch a furret now, dude. It's all a part of the game. You gotta catch the next one. It's Pokemon. I'm not gonna last. I'll just copy off of his homework for the next episode. 
If you guys have the same stories, just make sure to change a couple words about it so we don't have any plagiarism, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, yeah, there's like a Tyranitar, or wait, should I be talking about later stuff in the game? Should I no. even... No, <laughs> no, we haven't played it. You're oh. the expert, apparently. <laughs> That's why I said you gotta save before the fur, or you gotta wait till end game. Just saying. Alright, alright, oh. save it for the fur. Okay. But we'll talk about for okay. it next time, everybody. Just put, we'll we'll stop there for, I guess, game club. But hey, right. next well, time we should get X D X. Okay, Gala Darkness. D X Gala Darkness. Yeah, is that because there's Lugia at the end instead of Ho Oh or something? Yes. Or is Lugia the primary focus of that game? Yes. Okay. Well. Thanks for watching, uh, <laughs> listening to the podcast, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, Bubby's not here, obviously. Uh, Love I, you, Bub. I, Why are you I, just mentioning that again? I, I, I mean, he, he's not here. Like, he should have been here, but, I mean, he's not, and that's okay. He'll be here next time, I think. Oh, for or sure. Or never again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bubby, you've been cut. <laughs> uh thanks for listening send us off jesse okay uh i don't have a piano but i have <gasps> this might work there we go that's the closest i got to music <laughs> thanks everybody right. bye 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 bye